In this fourth video in our series, we're going to look at the process control requirements for the production of compacted graphite iron in the foundry. And the main challenge with CGI is that it's stable only over a very narrow range. And we can see that in this first overhead, where we have the different types of cast iron as a function of the amount of magnesium added to the iron. So at the left end, when we don't have any magnesium, we make gray iron yeah, with its randomly oriented flakes. If we make more than a certain amount of magnesium, we have good ductile iron. And somewhere in the middle is a stable plateau for CGI. And everyone will discuss where the plateau is located and how big it is. But the truth is that it changes for every product and it changes every day in the foundry. So magnesium reacts with oxygen and sulfur. So on a day when the oxygen and sulfur are high, the entire plateau moves toward the right. And on a day when the oxygen and sulfur are low, the plateau will move toward the left. So we have this moving target, yeah? So the first thing is that it's a very small range. It's only about 0.008% of magnesium wide. It means some target plus minus 0.004. That's really narrow by foundry standards. And then that's compounded by the fact that it's constantly moving. Um, the next thing that we have to consider is that the magnesium is always fading, yeah? The, the boiling temperature of magnesium is 1,100 degrees Celsius, and the liquid iron in the ladle is more than 1,450. So the magnesium is constantly boiling off the surface. And the general rule is that we lose 0.001% of magnesium every five minutes. So if we make a ladle, and the, we start in this position. The first casting is good CGI, but the magnesium fades. The second one is lower. The third one is a bit lower. And maybe by the end of the ladle, we fall off of this abrupt transition from CGI into gray iron. And then we start to make flakes. And we can see that in this overhead. We've taken a standard one-ton ladle in the production foundry. We've intentionally undertreated it so that the graphite starts to grow as flakes. Yeah, we're down on that transition. And what we can see in this overhead, in the middle of the growth cell, the graphite is growing as flake. As the, as the growth cell grows outward, the iron rejects magnesium. It's segregated. So the magnesium is becoming higher and higher. And by the time we get to the perimeter of the growth cell, we have a compacted graphite iron structure. And even here in between the cells where the magnesium is higher, we have good CGI, and we can even see some nodules, yeah? So in this one ton ladle in the foundry, we can then add some magnesium by our wire feeder. We can inject the magnesium. And here we see that by adding just 0.001% of magnesium, it's enough to change from the flake patch structure to a good CGI structure, yeah? It's 10 grams of magnesium in one ton of liquid iron. And that's enough to change from this good CGI structure, which will give 450 megapascal tensile strength um, to this one, which might only be 320 megapascal tensile strength. So if the engine designer is designing for good CGI and he gets the one on the left, the engine will fail. So that shows the sensitivity to the magnesium, but the stability of CGI is also sensitive to the addition of inoculant. And we can see that if we go back to the S-curve. So inoculant is the stuff that the foundryman adds. He puts it into the iron, it reacts with oxygen to make the small seeds or the nuclei that the graphite grows on. So if there's a lot of oxygen, we'll make a lot of nuclei. And if we have a lot of nuclei, we're going to make a lot of graphite. And those graphites are going to be smaller and more like nodules. What it means, on a day when the oxygen is high, this plateau shifts up toward higher nodularity. And on a day when the oxygen is low, it shifts down. And we can also see an example of this. So again, in the production foundry, in a one-ton ladle, after the first addition of magnesium and inoculant, here we have a good CGI structure. Um, we then add 0.08% inoculant, and this is a typical inoculant addition just before casting. And what you can see is we have a, a big increase in the number of nodules. So for a complex casting, like a cylinder block or a cylinder head, uh, the structure on the left will give us a good sound casting, but the structure on the right with these higher nodularity um, will definitely give porosity defects. 
Um, so what it means is that the CGI target is always changing. Um, if your philosophy is to control the chemistry and to every day target 12 magnesium because it's the middle of the CGI range, on a day when the oxygen and the sulfur are high, the, the plateau is up here and 12 is flakes. So we have to change our control strategy when we think about CGI. The foundry grew up, grew up by controlling chemistry, but with CGI we have to ignore the chemistry, we have to find out where the plateau is every day, and we have to go to that plateau. Yeah. Um, so let's look at a little example about controlling, because now we know that we have to stay on top of the plateau, but I'd like to show also the importance of where we are on the plateau. So this is an example about shrinkage in the production of compacted graphite iron. And we start with our reference case here at point A in gray iron. Um, and we're going to make a casting, uh, we call it the bathtub casting. Um, it's about uh, 25 centimeters long, 10 centimeters high, and it has this empty gap in the middle of it. Um, when we produce it in gray iron, uh, we have a good flat bottom and no internal porosity. If we then move to point B, which is the low end of the CGI range, and we make the same casting, again, you see that we have a good flat bottom and a good CGI structure. Yeah, it shows that it has 7% nodularity. Um, when we return and we're now at the higher end of the CGI range at point C, and we make the same casting, this is from the same ladle. So again, we've made a one ton ladle We've produced the casting at point B. We add a little bit of magnesium and pour it again. So the history of the iron ex is exactly the same. It's probably only one or two minutes between making casting B and casting C. The only difference is the magnesium. And what you see is that now we start to have a concave bottom. There's the onset of some uh, shrinkage porosity. And but still we have a good CGI structure. Yeah, we're saying now that it has 8%. So the nodularity has stayed the same, but the sintercast measurement, this MGM value, has increased from 36 to 44. For us, it's easy to see, um, but under the microscope, it looks like the same material. Yeah, and what you can see is that here, between point B and C, we're on the CGI plateau, so it's logical that the nodularity is the same for both of them, but the castability is a lot different. And when we move to point D and make another casting from the same ladle, you can see that we now have again the concave bottom, um, higher amount of porosity inside the casting, and higher nodularity. Um, so what it shows is there's an importance not just of being on the CGI plateau, but of being at the low end of the CGI plateau. And that's exactly what the Sintercast technology has been developed to do. Um, if you want more information about that, contact us.